हेलो एंड वेलकम टू डेली न्यूज सिंप्लीफाइड हेयर वी विल टेक अप द न्यूज आर्टिकल फ्रॉम द हिंदू ऑफ डेली एडिशन एंड डिस्कस दम एज पर द डिमांड ऑफ यूपीएससी सिविल सर्विसेज एग्जाम द टॉपिक्स फॉर टूडे डिस्कशन आर लिस्टेड ऑन योर स्क्रीन लेट एस बिगिन अवर डिस्कशन द फर्स्ट टॉपिक ऑफ टूडेज डिस्कशन इज बेस्ड ऑन दिस न्यूज विच फीचर्ड एट पेज नंबर एट इन द हिंदू it basically talks about the implications of expansion of brics during the 15th brics summit which concluded in johannesburg in south africa the group expanded its membership to include six new countries which are named as iran saudi arabia egypt ethiopia argentina and uae and for this particular development the media reports has highlighted johannesburg summit as a turning point in modern history this topic is relevant under general studies paper 2 in which the important international institutions agencies their structure and mandate is mentioned as a sub theme and moreover in 2022 upsc asked about bimstech and sarc in general studies paper 2 in mains exam and similarly in 2014 a specific question on brics was asked by ups which highlights the importance of international institutions in civil services exam the topic of expansion of brics was covered in detail in 3 september dns by ankit kaul sir so in today's discussion we will focus more on the basic details about brics and the importance of this particular institution for india on which a question can be asked in mains exam first of all let us discuss the basic details about brics the term came into existence in 2001 as bric which was used to describe the fast growing economies in the world which are named as brazil russia india and china and further in 2010 the group included south africa as its member and the name changed to brics and the third important information related to brics is that its first formal summit was held in 2009 in russia and from that particular year brics is meeting annually at summit level so here we have found three important facts which are related to brics first of all the term was coined in 2001 as bric and south africa was included in the grouping in 2010 and the first formal summit was held in 2009 and from this particular information you will be able to answer this prelims question the first statement says the first summit of brics was held in rio in 2009 it is an incorrect statement as the first summit held in russia the second statement says south africa was the last to join brics grouping it is a correct statement hence the answer to this question becomes b which is two only further we will discuss the two important arrangements under brics the first one is new development bank which is also known as brics bank it is a multilateral development bank which was established by brics countries to support the infrastructure and sustainable development projects in brics countries and other emerging economies so it is an important piece of information which can be useful for prelims exam and how many of you are aware about the headquarters of new development bank its headquarters is situated at shanghai which is in china and the next important thing is contingent reserve arrangement it is a financial safety net which was established by brics countries to support the countries in the times of the balance of payment problems or currency crisis so these are the two important arrangements under brics now we will shift our focus to discuss the importance of brics for india the first point here is economic cooperation with the expansion of brics it will now account for around 46% of the world population and 37% of the gdp in ppp terms and through this particular grouping india can access the wide markets for trade and investment opportunities which can help in boosting the economic growth and prosperity and moreover the members at the johannesburg summit agreed to use the local currencies for internal trade and financial transactions which will further boost the idea of internationalization of rupee as most of the internal trades will be done in local currency so it has become an important group for india to expand its economic cooperation in different regions the next one is investment and infrastructure the brics platform offers an opportunity for foreign direct investments and through funding 
from new development bank for infrastructure and sustainable development projects the third one is geopolitical influence as a member of this group india can participate in discussions on international issues and collaborate with other countries to address the common challenges and moreover in johannesburg summit all the brics countries united in their dissatisfaction with the domination of west controlled institutions such as world bank and imf and they gave a call for reforms in these institutions the next point is related to multilateral diplomacy brics serve as a platform for india to engage in multilateral diplomacy as india can work with other brics members on issues such as climate change terrorism and global governance and all the members of brics have a common view on issues like centrality of united nations the problems in west asia for example syria yemen and the war in ukraine further cultural and academic exchanges brics encourages cultural and academic exchanges among member countries which can lead to greater cooperation in the field of education science and culture it provides a platform to leverage the soft power of india the next one is regional and global stability by cooperating within brics india can contribute to regional and global stability and the group's collective efforts can help to address the security concerns in west asia which will eventually strengthen the global order the expansion of brics helps in diversification of partnership for india as it allows india to diversify its international partnerships beyond its traditional allies and with the inclusion of new members the geo strategic value of the group is also enhanced as the countries like iran egypt ethiopia and argentina plays an important role in energy security and maritime security and lastly it is a platform for the voice of developing nations brics often represents the interests and concerns of developing countries at international stage and india can use its brics membership to advocate for the policies that benefit the developing world and addresses the issues such as economic inequality and global governance reforms and to conclude this particular topic we can say that the brics members should assert their strategic autonomy within a multipolar world by emphasizing on their voice and interests a quick recap to our discussion first of all we have discussed the context and its relevance for general studies paper 2 we have seen the previous year questions both for mains and prelims further we discussed the basic details about brics and the importance of brics for india which is an important area on which a question can be framed in mains exam moving on to the next topic which is based on this news which appeared in the science section of the hindu it basically talks about criminalizing willful environmental damage this topic deals with ecocide and it is relevant under general studies paper 3 in which conservation and degradation of environment is mentioned and upsc every year asks at least one question on conservation or degradation of environment in 2019 upsc asked that coastal sand mining poses one of the biggest threat to our environment and you need to analyze the impact of sand mining along indian coasts citing specific examples so from this perspective this topic becomes important for our discussion and today we will be discussing what is ecocide and why there is a need for criminalizing ecocide first of all let us discuss about ecocide it is defined as an unlawful act committed with knowledge that there is a substantial likelihood of severe damage to the environment being caused by those acts in short ecocide is a human impact on environment causing mass destruction to the environment and it also refers as killing of one's home or environment through activities like port expansion projects deforestation illegal sand mining on which upsc asked a question in 2019 polluting rivers and releasing the untreated sewage and the common examples of ecocide include deforestation during vietnam war destruction of environment during russian invasion of ukraine and the chernobyl disaster 
You can mention these examples if a question appears on the anthropogenic effect on environment and what is the legal status of ecocide. As of now, there is no international law against ecocide that applies in peacetime. But Rome Statute makes it a crime. And the Rome Statute of International Criminal Court deals with four atrocities. The first one is genocide. The second one is crimes against humanity. The third one is war crimes. And the fourth one is the crime of aggression. And the provision of war crimes is the only statute that can hold preparator responsible for environmental damage, but only in the wartime situation and if it is intentional. That means if the environmental damage is not intentional, there is no provision even under Rome statute against the ecocide. Here we have explained the basics about ecocide. Now we will see why there is a need for criminalizing the ecocide. As highlighted by many reports that one third of earth's animal and plant species could be extinct by 2050. And moreover, the recent heat waves have broken the world records which is impacting the environment of earth. And apart from that, the changing precipitation patterns have impacted the human environment with flood and droughts. And moreover, the deforestation which is happening at Amazon forest could have been avoided if the ecocide laws are in place. In order to safeguard the environment of earth, specifically the forests, we need to criminalize the ecocide. And lastly, the disasters which are result of climate change are mostly impacting the low and middle income countries. And the ecocide laws could help in providing justice to those communities. These points highlight the need for criminalizing ecocide. As we have discussed the need, are you aware about the global status of ecocide laws? Let us have a look at that. Ecocide is a crime in 11 countries and many more countries are considering laws to criminalize the environmental damage that is intentionally caused to harm the environment. And the countries which have criminalized ecocide are Vietnam, Ukraine and Russia. So whenever you need to substantiate your arguments, you just need two to three examples to fulfill that particular aspect. Try to remember this piece of information that Vietnam, Ukraine and Russia have criminalized ecocide. Further, European Parliament has also brought a law to penalize the mass destruction of flora and fauna, poisoning the atmosphere or water resources or deliberate actions which are causing the ecological disaster. Here we have discussed the global status of ecocide laws. As we have discussed the global status of ecocide laws, you must be thinking about the status of ecocide laws in India. Now let us discuss ecocide and its status in India. Some court judgments have affirmed the legal personhood of nature by recognizing rivers as legal entities with the right to maintain their spirit, identity and integrity. But the concept has not fully materialized in law. That means there is no codified law for ecocide in India. We have different laws for different violations such as Environment Protection Act 1986, Wildlife Protection Act 1972. And in T.N. Godwarman case versus Union of India, Supreme Court called an attention to an anthropogenic bias and argued that the environmental justice could be achieved only if we drift away from the principle of anthropocentric to ecocentric. That means we need to shift our focus from the impact of environmental damage on humankind to the environment itself. Only then we can ensure justice to our mother earth. And what are the challenges in front of us? The National Green Tribunal, which is also known as Green Court, is the India's apex environmental statutory body and you must be surprised that this body does not have the jurisdiction to the matters related to Wildlife Protection Act 1972, the Indian Forest Act 1927 and other state enacted laws. That means in case of violation to these particular acts, one cannot appeal to the National Green Tribunal which is the highest court for environmental conservation. Further, 
the forest conservation amendment bill 2023 and the biodiversity amendment bill 2023 has certain provisions which will dilute the current legal protections and there is also a concern that it will lead to the loss of 20 to 25% of forest area in the country which will eventually impact the biodiversity and ecosystem at large and lastly the issue of liability and compensation which is a classical example of friction between the environmental protection and actual action for example the survivors of bhopal gas disaster are still fighting for the compensation and with this particular point we will conclude our discussion for this topic a quick recap to our discussion first of all we have discussed the context and its relevance for general studies paper 3 we have seen a previous year question which appeared in 2019 related to illegal sand mining we have discussed in detail about ecocide try to remember this particular term as it can be asked directly in prelims exam also further we discussed the need for criminalizing ecocide and the global status of ecocide laws and lastly we discussed ecocide and its status in india moving on to the next topic of today's discussion which is based on this news which featured at page number 9 in the hindu it basically talks about the reforms in criminal justice system this topic is relevant for general studies paper 2 under parliament and its functioning the union home minister has recently introduced three bills in parliament which aims to completely overhaul india's criminal justice system currently the india's criminal justice framework is governed by three key legislations the first one is indian penal code of 1860 the second one criminal procedure code of 1898 and the third one is indian evidence act 1872 and the newly proposed laws will replace the existing criminal laws this topic becomes important as it deals with the criminal justice system in india a direct question can be asked on the need for reforms in criminal justice system or the provisions of the new bills first of all let us discuss the need for overhauling the criminal justice system firstly all the three laws which were the indian penal code of 1860 criminal procedure code 1898 and the indian evidence act of 1872 were initially established by britishers to serve and prolong their exploitative rule hence these are the colonial laws which were brought in to serve their exploitative rule moreover their primary focus was not on ensuring justice for citizens rather to create a controlling perspective moreover approximately 70% of the 5 crore cases pertain to criminal matters and this can be attributed to various factors which include the insufficient number of judges complexity of factual scenarios nature of evidence involved and the cooperation of various stakeholders such as legal professionals investigative agencies witnesses and litigants and there is one more issue which pertains to indian criminal justice system and it is the issue of under trials as there are considerable number of individuals who are imprisoned in indian jails without being convicted and this particular situation throws a negative light on the effectiveness of the criminal justice system of india and the fundamental philosophy behind the new bills is the protection of constitutional rights and the assurance of justice for all the citizens of country and their objective is not merely to punish the individuals but to ensure that justice is also accessible to everyone let us have a look at the provisions of newly proposed bills first of all digitalization of criminal justice system the entire documentation from criminal cases the entire documentation of criminal cases from fir to judgment will be digitalized and the entire operations of courts including presentation of accused in court trial cross examination have been enabled to be done in video conferencing format and this will eventually reduce the paperwork in the criminal justice system and will increase the transparency in the system the second one is mandatory video recording during search operations earlier there was often a complaint that police deliberately put an object at the accused premise for personal stake and to better protect the rights of the accused video recording 
has been made mandatory during the search operations thirdly the emphasis on forensics to further improve the conviction rates in criminal justice system government has created national forensic science university which is expected to create a pool of 30 forensic professionals in next 3 years and the visit of forensics team to crime scene has been made mandatory for all crimes it will eventually increase the conviction rate in criminal cases the fourth one is introduction of zero fir zero firs will enable citizens to file their complaint or fir with any police station of country irrespective of the place of crime in the earlier scenario the need for registering case in police station of area where the incident has happened dated citizens for filing firs the next one is certification of arrest all district and police stations will have one notified officer who will give the certificate of arresting an individual to their families as it is often said that the police arrest someone and the concerned family members are not intimidated for many days forcing families to go to courts further there is a expansion of scope of summary trial now what does this summary trial means it is a legal proceeding that is typically quicker and less formal than a regular trial and it is often used for minor offenses or cases where there is no significant dispute over the facts and in these bills the scope of summary trials is being expanded for small and petty crimes and can be done for cases involving punishment up to 3 years of imprisonment the next one is timelines for cases presently the police department keep investigating for many years and file charge sheet after that under the newly proposed laws police must file charge sheet under maximum 180 days further the timeline have been introduced for notice charge framing trial and judgment of criminal cases so it is an important development with respect to criminal justice system the next in the list is deemed permission for charges against civil servants presently the permission of government was necessary for framing charges against civil servants and police officers but there was no timeline and in the new bill it is given that under 120 days government will have to decide to give permissions for charges against bureaucrats otherwise such permission will be deemed to be given that means if government does not take any action after 120 days then it will be assumed that government has given the permission to frame charges against the bureaucrats hence it is a positive move against those bureaucrats who take the advantage of this particular loophole the next one is reforms and punishment it is specifically related to the remission of punishment and to prevent the politicization of remission of punishment the newly proposed bills says that the governments while granting remissions will only be able to reduce the punishment from death sentence to life imprisonment and from life imprisonment to 7 years of imprisonment this will introduce objectivity and will also increase trust among people and lastly repeal of sedition sedition has been proposed to be decriminalized and this will ensure the dignity of individuals and respect their right to freedom of speech and expression hence the fundamental changes have been introduced in criminal justice system of country with the aim of ensuring a reformative and forward looking criminal justice system which ensures respect and justice the last topic of today's discussion is based on this news which featured at page number 8 in the hindu it basically talks about the infrastructure development in the hills and last month a bench headed by chief justice of india had suggested that an expert committee should conduct a complete and comprehensive study on the carrying capacity of himalayan region this topic revolves around the issue of development versus environment and it comes under general studies paper 3 in which the conservation and degradation of environment has been mentioned in 2019 upsc has specifically asked that define the concept of carrying capacity of an ecosystem and it highlights the importance of this particular topic in today's discussion we will try to discuss the concept of carrying capacity and the factors affecting carrying capacity of ecosystem and we will also focus on why the himalayan ecosystem is considered as unique and lastly the infrastructure effect on himalayan region let us understand the concept of carrying capacity 
कैरिंग कैपेसिटी ऑफ अ बायोलॉजिकल स्पीसीज इज अ पर्टिकुलर हैबिटेट रेफर्स टू द मैक्सिमम नंबर ऑफ इंडिविजुअल्स दैट एन एनवायरमेंट कैन कैरी एंड सस्टेन कंसिडरिंग इट्स जोग्राफिकल एंड फिजिकल फीचर्स एंड इन अ सिमिलर मैनर द कैरिंग कैपेसिटी ऑफ एन इको सिस्टम रेफर्स टू द मैक्सिमम पॉपुलेशन साइज ऑफ अ स्पीसीज दैट द इको सिस्टम कैन सस्टेनेबली सपोर्ट ओवर अ लॉन्ग टर्म given the available resources and environmental conditions so from this statement we get to understand the concept of carrying capacity and the physical features which are present in environment act as a limiting factor and what are those physical features such as food water competition etc and the food availability is an important variable as it affects the population size of species and moreover when the food supply exceeds the demand then the population size will soon increase and will stop increasing when the source is consequently depleted from this particular slide we get to know about the carrying capacity of an ecosystem and the important role which is being played by physical features now let us discuss the factors which affects the carrying capacity of an ecosystem as we have discussed previously food and water supply plays an important role the second is habitat space and the next one is competition between species both intraspecific and interspecific intraspecific competition refers to the competition for resources between the members or individuals of same species and on the other hand interspecific competition is competition for resources between the members of different species further the physical factors which include extreme heat drought etc they do play a role in the carrying capacity of an ecosystem further the chemical factors such as the ph level of water mineral deficiency etc are also the important factors in the carrying capacity of an ecosystem and lastly the anthropogenic factors which are the human induced factors which significantly affect the carrying capacity of an ecosystem for example habitat destruction pollution and over harvesting which reduces the carrying capacity within an ecosystem now let us discuss why the himalayan ecosystem is unique first of all the himalayan ecosystem due to its geographic extent have steep slopes and sharp gradients which plays an important role in bringing the climatic variables over short distances and these features results into enhanced changes in hydrological processes with accelerated runoff and erosion which can be seen in the shape of floods and landslides further the himalayan region is often referred as the water tower of asia and most of the rivers of this region have their origin in these mountains and they fulfill the needs of large proportion of human population within and outside the mountain region further many of the world's crops originate in mountains and have been used for centuries in traditional medicine systems such as ayurveda and tibetan medicine so this region is famous for medicinal plants and what other makes it unique it is the natural wealth in the region which is also known as the geological assets which includes minerals and fossils and it forms an important part of himalayan ecosystem and lastly the indigenous communities who have been living in this particular region since ages and they are endowed with cultures and knowledge system so all these aspects makes the himalayan ecosystem unique and lastly we will discuss the infrastructure effect on himalayan region the first one is slope destabilization the large scale construction of roads hotels and hydro projects involves blasting quarrying and deforestation which loosens the slope and destabilizes them hence it is an important issue with related to infrastructure in himalayan region the second one is floods due to heavy construction in himalayan region there has been alteration in the river flows which reduces the flood absorption and risks the downstream with flash floods and a classic example to this is the uttarakhand floods of 2013 the third point is landslides by disrupting the underground streams and aquifers tunnels can weaken slope stability leading to landslides for example the landslide happened in kinnor in himachal pradesh in 2022 and further 
द इशू ऑफ अर्थक्वेक्स ह्यूज प्रेशर इज एक्सर्टेड बाय लार्ज स्ट्रक्चर्स ऑफ डैम विच क्रिएट्स फ्रैक्चर्स एंड फॉल्ट इन द रॉक्स विच आर बिलो एंड विच इवेंचुअली रिजल्ट इन टू अर्थक्वेक फॉर एग्जाम्पल द माइनर अर्थक्वेक्स जनरेटेड ड्यू टू कोयना डैम द नेक्स्ट वन इज इरोजन एंड डिजिटिफिकेशन सिल्टेशन इन डैम्स डिवाइड द रिवर्स ऑफ नेचुरल सेडिमेंट्स एंड द डाउन स्ट्रीम सॉइल डज नॉट गेट इनफ न्यूट्रियट्स एंड रिजल्ट इन टू सॉइल इरोजन एंड डेजिटिफिकेशन एंड लास्टली फोर्स डिसप्लेसमेंट द ह्यूज कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ रोड्स एंड रेलवेज डिस्ट्रॉयज द लाइवलीहुड सोर्सेज ऑफ इंडिजीनियस कम्युनिटीज विच फर्दर इंक्रीजेज देयर वलनरेबिलिटीज टू द डिजास्टर्स एसोसिएटेड विद इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर a quick recap to our discussion first of all we discuss the context and its relevance for general studies paper 3 we have also seen a previous year question on carrying capacity of an ecosystem we have discussed the concept of carrying capacity and the factors which affect the carrying capacity of an ecosystem we also discussed the unique aspects of himalayan ecosystem and the effect of infrastructure projects on himalayan region that's all for today's discussion Thank you for watching today's DNS. Stay tuned for upcoming sessions which will enhance your understanding regarding various topics which are coming in everyday's newspaper.